Please welcome Rise Academy's fifth grade teacher and my former teacher, Mark Joseph. Good evening. Like Bernice said, my name is Mark Joseph. I teach fifth grade math, coach cross country, and run a Harry Potter book, book club at Rise Academy. Uh, the kids actually call me Mojo, um, but if you think about it, Mark Joseph should be Majo, not Mojo, so clearly I got lucky. This is a picture of Rise 21 Ashland Street. People talk about a home away from home. This literally is my home. I get my mail sent to here directly because I know that it's gonna be delivered. I joke with my girlfriend about having a potluck wedding in the gym, and I'm only joking because she'll dump me if it happens. <laughs> On a more serious note though, seven years ago when I started teaching in the Bronx, I actually called out sick on my third day. I didn't think I could handle the responsibility of teaching. I didn't think I was right for those kids. I'm not sure what got me up on the fourth day to go in, but I'm here seven years later at team schools and I cannot imagine doing anything else with the rest of my life. So in order to talk a little bit about my classroom, which I co-teach with Lindsay Epstein, I need to talk about another pair of teachers at Rise First, Travis Dempsey and Rob Thomas. Last year they had the highest math results in sixth grade math of all, in all of KIPP. And I think it's an awesome classroom to start with because they use a blended learning model there. Basically what that means is they take iPads, computers, and some direct instruction, throw it all together, and get amazing results. They also use Khan Academy, a free website online that allows kids to do a master objectives and watch videos that are right on their level. Let's show the clip. Good, next one. Negative five, X plus three, go. If you were to come to my classroom on a typical day, you would see students come in, they would take a warm up. After the warm up, they would go to their individualized places around the room, and students would work on one of three things. Um, some students would work on Khan Academy on their own at a laptop. Some students would go to workstations, which are where students are gathered around a TV, and they are working together to solve Khan Academy problems. The rest of the students are going to be up front with me, um, working on a problem of the day, and just working on problem solving skills. When you watch that video, it's easy to get caught up in the slam dunk that is their classroom. What we often miss are the little things that LeBron does behind the scenes or Travis and Rob do behind their scenes that make the classroom what it is. One example of this is Travis and Rob. Wait for the slide, hold on one second. There we go, sorry. One example of this is Travis and Rob had to ask Drew, our principal, to even have laptops. And because Drew has the autonomy to make those decisions, he said yes. They had to write grants for flat screen TVs, and when money wasn't available, Travis just bought the flat screen TVs on his own credit card. <laughs> Another thing that they do is they actually give kids playlists of the objectives to work on so they're not working aimlessly, they actually have some direction. And we had to have a member of our data team create Google accounts for every KIPP in the network to allow kids to access Khan. What's more is that Travis is a beast of data. He shares this data publicly with his kids, shows it to them daily, and hypes up competition so kids can see exactly where they are, they know exactly where they need to go, and they look forward to seeing if they move up or move down. Another thing they do that might actually seem basic is they actually have to teach kids how to go and get the laptop, how to put it back, how to ignore distractions when, when they're working individually with Travis and Rob, and how to ignore Travis and Rob when, we're in their, when they're working individually on their own. Finally, and this is actually a picture of Bernice who will be here tonight, and she's already the voice of God outside, you can hear her. They actually have to hear, they actually have to teach kids how to work with each other, how to value friendship with competition, how to promote the idea that together we can achieve more than we can alone. And Bernice yesterday, who took a math test, actually scored in the 99th percentile of all students now. She's 
She's also rocking that orange summer jump, uh, summer millionaire shirt there, which means last summer she read about 20 books or so in her free time. But that's another story for another day. So, like any good teachers, Lindsay and I, we just stole all of Travis and Rob's ideas. <laughs> if Travis and Rob are the LeBron and Dwayne Wade, we're trying to be the Westbrook and Durant. She's Durant. And so here's a picture, and here, sorry, here's a video of our classroom. All right. So we're trying to find the surface area. So put down that I put it was all two centimeters. So what do y'all want to do to get the surface area? Not two times six. Brian just said the area was four square centimeters. Four times six, or four plus four plus four plus four plus four plus four. Plus four. This is really hard. I challenge you to go on Common Mastery if you want to try it. Alright, later. So one thing that Lindsay and I and Travis and Rob all use are these things called Sentios, which are literally just a tool that allow us to see exactly how kids are doing in the moment on their lessons. Here's actually a picture of me reading out the kids who had 100 that day. And again, I don't need to go home and grade these. I can actually call out and shout out the kids right then and there for doing awesome. This allows us to pull dynamic groups, which actually means we help kids right where they are. And the kids that already know the material don't need to sit down and learn it again. They can do harder material on their own online. Something else this lets us do is in this picture, actually message failure as an opportunity to succeed in the future. These students got some problems wrong on the warm-up. I don't think by looking at them you can tell. Basically, they know it's just not something they learned yet. Here in this picture of Danielle, something that's not shown is that she got there at 6.30 that morning and actually gets to school at 6.30 every morning and is the first person I see when I unlock the gate and look on Ashland Street. I have no idea what she's working on because she's far outpaced the curriculum and I trust her that much that she can do whatever she wants. And today when she took her, her math test, she actually scored this 94th percentile of all kids nationally. So it worked out for her. <laughs> Finally, there's a picture of two of my favorite students, Isabel and Isaiah, who I coach cross country and do the Harry Potter book club in. And I think at Rise, they found another home. I think at Rise, it's not just a place where you can learn, but it's a place where you can feel known, loved, and valued. And I think it's a reason that kids love and just come into school in the morning. So every year, and today we did this at Rise, we actually get this nationally known assessment called the MAP test. And kids all over the United States take it. And on this next slide, you'll be able to see that last year these are our results. And if we zoom in, you can see by looking at the box on the right, that's us. 94% of kids met their goals, but if you see, they came in well below average, which is that first dotted line. However, if you look at the second dotted line, you notice they leave us well above average, which in one year is awesome. However, what's more awesome is if you look at the next slide, sixth grade math, Travis and Rob's class, you can actually see that they start way farther ahead because of the work Lindsay and I do, but they actually take kids all the way to that last third dotted line, which no KIPP school in sixth grade ever got to. That line. That line is the 75th percentile. What that means, in very basic terms, is that they can outperform 75% of students nationally in sixth grade math. So whether you're from Newark or Montclair, Short Hills or San Francisco, it does not matter they are outperforming 75% of sixth graders in the United States. I just think that's particularly awesome because we don't have an elementary school feeding rise yet. So we took students who came in two years below grade level and put them above average. And that is because the students themselves put in the work. It would be very easy to stop there and say that's it. But that's not actually it. This is a picture of me when I graduated college. And I still wish I had that truck. Something I don't tell people very often is that when I graduated, I was given this award given to the most useful man at my college to humanity. 
And then the next year, I actually worked in a farm, and I bagged groceries. And this is a picture of the actual grocery store. And I used to feel bad about it. I used to regret that year. I used to look down at myself. And then after meeting these amazing people at the supermarket, I realized it's not what you do. It's who you are and the pride you have in what you do. And I really believe that this message needs to be communicated regularly to students. So one thing that Lindsay and I did recently is we played this song by Ryan Lewis and Mac Lamore called 10,000 Hours. And I'm going to show you a quick clip of that now. And as I was rereading Harry Potter 3, giving you a sum, y'all, you might remember that part where Harry saves himself. It just reminded me that some of y'all are still trying your best to save yourselves. Some of y'all are deciding to think, oh, it's May, I'm kind of like in relaxed mode. So I'm going to play you part of the song that we've actually played once before. Respect to Kai Thor, but still have it. I think that's awesome. I deserve to extra. I love Basquiat. I watch Keith Herring. You see, I study art. The greats were great because at birth they could paint. The greats were great because they paint a lot. With your partner, you either A, share your favorite lines, B, talk about it, with you, C, ask them what it meant to them. Macklemore is really saying to him, saying to everyone that when you have a, like, you're not born with a talent, as you grow, you adapt to that talent, and you keep working hard so you can improve on it, and everybody thinks like, oh, Kevin Durant was born a good basketball player. No, he wasn't. When he was a kid, he worked hard, and he, be and he believed in himself so he could be in the NBA. That line is mega deep. Respect to Macklemore. One day I'll have him come by and I'll wrap it for you. <laughs> All right, you gotta go for that someone. So I, I really think Josiah summed it up perfectly there. And we believe that no matter what our kids do in life, whether they become a teacher or whether they bag groceries one day, it doesn't matter. All that matters is who you are. And we fundamentally do this on a regular basis. So this isn't just like a one-time thing. Every day we take 10 minutes and play a song or read a poem or watch a YouTube video because we really believe that when you one day forget how to find the surface area of a cube, when you forget how to subtract fractions, hopefully you still remember the themes and the messages that we taught you. Hopefully when you're struggling or you need inspiration, you come back to these moments and hopefully those guide you on. Lindsay and I, like our kids are awesome at math. But strike the words at math. Our kids are awesome. And that's just it. And I think we have one last picture I put in of a, a, re, a race recently. And that, that's it. That, that's why I do exactly what I do. So thank you for letting me share my story with you. And have a great evening.